Hi, everyone. Can you hear me in the back? OK, so this talk is about ranking from pairwise comparisons. Um, as human beings, we love to make pairwise comparison judgments. Right? So we say all the time that we like this food more than this one. We thought this candidate did better than this one in the debate, and so on and so forth. A natural question that arises is, if we have, say, some n items, and we observe a bunch of pairwise comparisons among these, can we learn from these comparisons a good ranking or permutations of the n items? Um, this question is so ubiquitous that it's been studied in disciplines ranging from statistics to operations research, from theoretical computer science to machine learning and so on. The question we're interested in over here is, when can we learn a good ranking or permutation of n items from comparisons of just n log n pairs that are chosen in a non-active or non-adaptive manner? So just to be a little more formal with this, we have n items. We assume a standard statistical model where there's an unknown preference matrix P such that for every pair of items i and j, every time we compare these items, there's a coin that gets flipped with bias Pij. Okay, so with probability Pij, we see that i beats j. Probability 1 minus Pij, we see that j beats i. We observe some pairwise comparisons, which basically consist of comparisons of pairs ij in some subset of pairs e. And for simplicity, let's just assume that each of the pairs in this set is compared some capital K times. Okay. The goal is to learn from these comparisons a good ranking, a good permutation, okay, where we measure the quality of a permutation by the fraction of pairs on which it disagrees with the underlying pairwise model P. Okay. So the key thing for us over here is the size and the nature of the set of pairs E. What we want is that the set of pairs that are compared is small on the order of n log n, and that the set of pairs is chosen in advance, right, non-actively, before the outcomes of any comparisons are observed. Okay. So what's currently known? So first of all, if these pairwise comparisons actually follow a deterministic ordering, right, so there's a permutation such that Pij is 1 whenever i is ranked ahead of j by the permutation, then it's a standard result in computer science that um, comparisons of n log n pairs is sufficient to recover this ranking. But these pairs need to be chosen actively or adaptively. Right? In 2008, uh, Braverman and Mossel showed that this actually holds for a somewhat broader condition on the pairwise preference matrix P. Um, in particular, you can do with a noisy permutation condition, okay, where there's a noise associated with observing these outcomes. And again, one can compare n log n pairs. They need to be chosen adaptively. Another um, widely studied condition on the pairwise model in statistics is the bradley terry lewis or BTL condition, where there's a score for each item. Okay? So for each item i, there's a score, let's say wi. And the probability of i beating j is just its score divided by the sum of the two scores. Okay. Um, here, one often performs maximum likelihood estimation. And here, typically, one uses comparisons of all n squared pairs. So there's no active selection, one just uses all pairs. Now recently, um, in 2012, Negavan and colleagues showed that um, so they proposed a spectral ranking algorithm called rank centrality. And they showed that under the BTL model, um, comparing just n log n randomly chosen pairs, each roughly log n times, suffices to estimate accurately the BTL scores and therefore construct a good ranking. Okay. Um, another recent work uh, showed that under the noisy permutation model, okay, a simple algorithm called a balanced rank estimation, which just ranks items by their border scores, again achieves something similar. Okay. So our interest here is in understanding what are broader conditions on the pairwise model under which we can show similar results. So we're going to restrict ourselves to um, preference models that satisfy stochastic transitivity, because outside this, minimizing the pairwise disagreement error is hard even under exact knowledge of P. And in particular, the BTL and P models are also stochastically transitive. What we do in this work is we define a new family of conditions on the pairwise comparison model, which we call low rank preferences, 
So these are preference matrices that have low rank under a suitable link transform. And we show that um, we propose a new algorithm called low rank pairwise ranking. We show that this algorithm, um, which makes use of tools from the theory of low rank matrix completion, allows us to recover a good ranking um, from comparisons of n log n randomly chosen pairs, each roughly log n times, for a much broader class of conditions than what has been known previously. Okay. Um, in particular, these encompass the BTL class for a particular choice of the link, the logit link, um, but they're far more general than what's been considered previously. So let me just quickly walk you through um, the definition and some of the main results. So a preference matrix P may not be low rank itself. Um, we say it has rank R under a link function. A link function is just a strictly increasing function that maps probabilities in 0, 1 to numbers in the real line. Um, if, if the transformed matrix has rank R. Um, common examples of such a link are the logit and probit links. Um, as I mentioned, the BTL, the bradley terry lewis model, um, is actually a special case. It, has, it always has rank 2 under the logit link. Um, similarly, the Thurstone model, which is also widely studied in statistics, has rank 2 under the probit link. Okay. You can um, look at many more general models as well. Um, so we have some nice characterizations of these and other classes in the paper. I'll leave the details out. Um, the algorithm we propose, um, not surprisingly, it's quite intuitive. What we'd like to do in some sense is the following. So we're able to estimate the pairwise comparison probabilities, PIJs, for a small number of the pairs IJ, right? for just n log n of these. Um, what we'd like to do is in some sense complete that matrix, right? um, using some sort of low rank estimation technique, and then apply a standard pairwise ranking algorithm on that. It's just a small catch in that uh, these numbers are in 0, 1. Okay. So we basically go to um, the real line by applying the link, um, apply the low rank matrix completion method out there, apply inverse link to get back estimated probabilities, and then use a standard pairwise ranking algorithm on this. Okay. So these two components need to satisfy certain conditions to obtain guarantees. Um, in particular, the low rank matrix completion method needs to have formal exact recovery guarantees under noisy observations. Um, in our work, we use the opt space algorithm of Kishab and all. And uh, the pairwise ranking algorithm needs to satisfy certain approximation guarantees. Here, we use a Copeland method. Okay. Again, I'll leave out the details. The main result is this. I don't want you to go through all the details. What's yeah. What's important is just, so if your pairwise preference matrix um, you know, has rank R under a suitable link, then what this says is that it's sufficient to um, compare NR log n, roughly NR log n pairs, um, each roughly R log n times, in order to construct a good ranking. And uh, just quickly summarize some experiments. So this is for a model that actually satisfies the BTL condition, and here, when the number of pairs compared is very small, um, even here, uh, the algorithm we propose with the logit link rank 2, this is the red curve at the bottom, actually achieves smaller disagreement error compared to the other baseline algorithms. Um, this is also true when we go to other low rank sort of models which are not in the BTL and other classes that are known before. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for the summary. Again, what we do with this work is basically expand considerably the class of models under which we can recover a good ranking from comparisons of n log n pairs um, chosen non-actively. Thanks. <laughs>